Hi guys, this is Hima Hegde bringing to you the daily news podcast at Sosin Classes. All the news you need to know and more. To start with, let us look at the topics under light for today. In today's session, we'll be discussing two articles of which one of them is a part of General Studies 2 and the second article falls under the category of Science and Tech of General Studies 3. So let's proceed. The first article is about His Holiness Keshavananda Bharati. His Holiness Keshavananda Bharati passed away on 6th of September at the age of 80. It was his case that the Supreme Court laid down the principle that the basic structure of the constitution, the basic structure of the constitution cannot be altered. How do we go about with this article? Here's the roadmap for the same. We will first learn about the background and then learn about the concept of basic structure of the constitution. This is nothing but the doctrine. And then we look look into the conclusion of the same. Moving on, here's the background. His Holiness Keshavananda Bharati was the chief pontiff. Was the chief pontiff. Pontiff is nothing but the Pope or the Pandit. Chief pontiff in the Ednir Mutt a monastic religious institution located in Kasargod district, Kerala. He had some land in the mud which he owned. The Kerala state government, the Kerala state government passed the Land Reforms Amendment Act in 1969. As per this act, the government could acquire some of the lands that belonged to the mud. In 1970, His Holiness Keshavananda Bharati moved the Supreme Court to enforce the rights that were guaranteed to him under Article 25, that is the right to practice and propagate religion. Article 26, that is the right to manage religious affairs. Article 14, that is the right to equality. Article 19, that is the freedom to acquire property and finally the article 31 which is about the compulsory acquisition of property. So let us look at what exactly is the basic structure of the constitution. Like I said earlier it was his case that is the Keshavananda Bharati versus the Kerala government case that the Supreme Court laid down the principle that the basic structure of the constitution that is the doctrine cannot be altered. So what exactly is it? As per the basic structure doctrine, any amendment changing the basic structure of the constitution, any amendment changing the basic structure of the constitution is invalid or it's considered null and void. The idea is to preserve the basic nature of Indian democracy and protect the rights and liberties of the citizens of India. So coming to the significance, coming to the significance of this in strengthening of democracy, the first point is protection from authoritarian regime. It certainly saved the Indian democracy from entering into an authoritarian regime. Secondly, the judiciary independence. It strengthens our democracy by delineating a true separation of power where the judiciary is independent of the other two organs that is the legislature and executive it has also given immense power to the supreme court thirdly we have the citizenship rights by restraining the amending powers of the legislature it provides basic rights to the citizens which no organs of the state can overrule these rights are nothing but the fundamental rights being dynamic in nature It is more progressive and open to changes in time unlike the rigid nature of earlier judgments. Now that we know the details of the case as well as the concept of basic structure of the constitution that is the doctrine, let us move on to understand how this case was concluded. The case of Keshavananda Bharati versus the state of Kerala had been heard for 68 long days for 68 days with the bench of 13 members. 68 long days with a bench of 13 members. The majority of the bench 
wish to safeguard the constitution by preserving its basic features. The judgment was based on sound reasoning wherein the bench held an opinion that if if the parliament would be uh, given limitless powers, if the parliament would go limitless, then it could be misused and the government could change it as per their preferences. Thus, there was a need for doctrine to protect the rights of both the Indian parliament as well as the Indian citizens. This doctrine is nothing but the basic structure of the constitution that we just discussed. That is nothing but the doctrine. So hence, the need for doctrine was justified. Thus, there came the basic structure of the constitution and since independence, there have been over 100 amendments in the Indian constitution. It is because of the bench's decision that the identity and the spirit of the constitution have not been lost. This landmark case has given our constitution stability. It is important to note that the petitioner lost the case. Even though the petitioner lost this case, the Supreme Court ruling in the case turned out to be the savior of the Indian democracy. It turned out to be the savior of the Indian democracy and also prevented the constitution from losing its spirit. Thus, with all this, it has been clearly evident of what significance this case has been holding for the Indian democracy. The Keshavananda Bharati judgment proved timely and thwarted many an attempt on democracy and dignity of individual during those dark years. So that's about this article. Moving on, here we have the cutouts of the latest articles or the latest headlines speaking of latest discoveries by the Chandrayaan 1. So the articles read, Moon may be rusting along the poles. Moon may be rusting along the poles suggest images sent by Chandrayaan 1. Moon may be rusting shows ISRO's Chandrayaan 1 images. Chandrayaan 3 likely to launch in launch early in 2021. The third one, ISRO's Chandrayaan 1 spots rusting on the moon and NASA scientists believe that the Earth's atmosphere could be the reason why. These articles are purely factual. Thus, I have presented before you the facts from the articles. Moving on, it is important for us to note that the Chandrayaan 1 was the first India's first lunar mission. Chandrayaan 1 was India's first lunar mission. So during the tenure of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, the project got a boost and finally Chandrayaan 1 was launched on 22nd of October 2008 from the Satish Dhawan Space Center from the Satish Dhawan Space Center using the ISRO's four stage PSLV7 PSLV C11 launch vehicle PSLV C11 launch vehicle let us now look at the latest findings union minister jitendra singh said that the images sent by Chandrayaan 1 suggest that the moon may be rusting along the poles. The moon may be rusting along the poles. Now, it is known that rusting is an oxidation reaction. The iron reacts with water in presence of oxygen to form hydrated iron oxide. That is, iron plus water plus oxygen, they all together form the hydrated iron oxide, which is nothing but the rust. Now that the surface of the moon is known to have iron rich rocks, the surface of the moon is known to have iron rich rocks, but it is not, not known to have the presence of water and oxygen which are needed to create rust. So the earth's atmosphere, the only conclusion here is that the scientists of NASA say that this could be because the earth's atmosphere is lending a helping hand. The Earth's own atmosphere is protecting the moon as well. So the strong winds from the sun, as you can see, that the solar winds or the strong winds from the sun blows away the upper layers of the Earth's atmosphere. If the moon is currently correctly positioned, then the atoms of the gases, including oxygen, reach the poles by riding on the strong magnetic fields. The, these are the, the magnetic fields are indicated here. So by riding on the strong magnetic fields, 
the gases that is the oxygen could reach the poles by riding on these over billions of years this oxygen reacts with the moon's iron forming an oxide even in the vastness of space the earth literally breathes into the moon devouring the old minerals and creating new ones dr jitendra singh also mentioned that the chandrayaan 3 that the chandrayaan 3 will be a mission will be a repeat mission of chandrayaan 2 and will include a lander and rover similar to that of chandrayaan 2 but will not have an orbiter its launch will be scheduled for early 2021 so that's about it for this for all the articles under this subject so lastly we have to look into the dnd document so here's a snapshot of the dnd document you will get the same from the official sourcing classes website i'll read out the questions for you explain the role of international institutions along with regionally coordinated policies to help financing economic recovery what is the historical significance that the keshavananda bharati case carry in the history of the judicial review and why is it in the news now so i believe this can be answered on the basis of the article that we just discussed moving on the paper titled the impact of forest policies on timber production in india a review calls for change in india's forest policy discuss lastly what is a credit shell and how does it balance how does it balance concerns of the passengers and cash strapped airlines so here's a prelims practice question for you identify which of the following license is mandatory for a non profit organization to receive foreign funds in india fdi policy foreign exchange management act 1999 that is the fema foreign contribution regulatory act fcra or the indian companies act 2013 So here's the answer to the yesterday's question that is answer C. Find the answer with explanation in tomorrow's sheet. Thus, leaving you all to write your answers in the comment section. It's a wrap on your news podcast. Tomorrow is another day with another news. Thank you.